I'm Deborah Pitts. I live in Glen Carbon, and I'm just glad to be here today. It's a beautiful day out. I grew up in Chicago. I spent uh, my first 18 years in Chicago. We moved to the south side of Chicago. I was supposed to go to Marshall High School, which is uh, all African-American school. So I moved to on the south side of Chicago, and at that time, we were able, some of the people from, that were scheduled to go to Marshall, we were able to go take a test and go to uh, a school on the north side, which was predominantly Caucasian. So I went to a predominantly Caucasian high school. When I graduated from high school, my major was theater and dance. I thought I wanted to be in Broadway. I started doing some research on uh, being a theater major, and I thought, I like things. So in order to have things, you have to have money, correct? Yeah. So I thought, I need to get into something that I can earn a paycheck. So I changed my major to education. I was staying with a lady named Jane Hornberger, and she was really a big influence in, in education. Uh, so I switched my major the end of my sophomore year. So I had to go to summer school my sophomore year. Junior, I had to go to summer school. I didn't graduate in May of 75 with the other students. I had to wait till August because I played another game for two years. So in, I was gonna go back home. Okay, you always think about going back home when you go to college. The teachers in Chicago were on strike in 1975. So they weren't taking any applications. So I said, well, I'll get a job, I'll stay here a year, and then go back home. That was in 75, it's 2024, and I'm still here in Edwardsville. So this is my home now. I really love Edwardsville. And when you asked me a question earlier, you mentioned about segregation. My elementary and middle school, it was predominantly uh, African-American schools. But when I got to Roosevelt High School on the north side, it was diverse, but it was predominantly Caucasian. So that was a change, but I like people. So I get along with people. Uh, I, I don't look at the color of a person's skin and say, I like you because of this or that. I like people, I like young adults. Education is, uh, I'm an advocate for education. When I started teaching in Alton, uh, it was tough. There were jobs that I wanted to apply for that, you know, I knew I was well qualified but didn't get it because of the color of my skin. I went through that three times. We had a lot of social justice training in Alton. Um, I went to Tempe, Arizona for some training. We went up to Chicago and we just did a lot of social justice training. I know you mentioned that I was on the school board and I was only, Af well, there were two African Americans on the school board, Mr. Pitts, which is not my husband. <laughs> He goes to my church at the same time, right. But I had to explain to some of the board members that I have my own opinion. And I know that we would have discussions in our executive committees, but I had to explain to them my feelings and where I was coming from. And I know how votes are gonna go, but I had to vote my heart, not your heart, my heart. And that's hard for people to understand to accept you, you know, yeah. yeah. Did you ever regret not pursuing that dream of Broadway or did it always feel <clears> far away? Uh, I still think about it. However, even after college, high school and college, I did some shows over at the Alton Little Theater. Uh, and that, you know, that took me to where I wanted to be. I did some shows over at Alton Little Theater. I have a season, Ticket, I'm a season ticket holder for Alton Little Theater. In fact, Sunday they're doing a show. My friend said, Deb, what are they, what, where are you gonna see? I said, I don't know. That's not important. I'm gonna be there in the theater and I'm gonna see some live acting going on. So it's okay. I don't have to know ahead of time. But I still have that, that, you know, that thirst, that love for theater. Mm -hmm. I took a job in Alton and my first job was uh, at a middle school now this 1975, way, way before your time and your parents' time probably, it was a, I was a self-contained behavior disorder teacher at a, at a middle school. 
I did that five years at Central Junior High School. I did one year at East. So then the next year, I went to the high school, to Alton High School. I did 13 years as um, a special ed teacher BD. I coached track and volleyball, and I was over the palms back then. You know, I was big in the union. So I did that 13 years. That took care of my first 18 years, and I received my master's in uh, guidance counseling in 83. So I hadn't used it. So I was a guidance counselor for two years at Alton High from 93 to 95. Um, Dr. Hightower, who's someone who I really respect, he asked me to be a dean of students in 94. So I said, no, I can't do it because I was really big in the union. We had a big contract coming, and I was the membership chair, so I wanted to be in on that. So I said no. But you know, sometimes when you give up something, God puts you in a place where you want to be because it came available the next year again. So I stepped out on faith and I took the dean of students job. So I was the dean of students from 95 to 2000. A lady who was on the school board in Bethalto, Caucasian friend of mine, Annis Brave, thought that I would be a good principal and I could help get the school back in order. So I went through the interview. They called me. They wanted to offer me the job. I thought, what? They said, we're going to come to your school and walk around. And some of the board members came and they walked around and I got the job. So it was tough the first year. After that, it was a piece of cake. The community got to know me for being me, not the color of my skin. People are people. You know, when, when I pull back this layer of skin and you pull back yours, we're the same. I love people. I love to be respectful. I like to be respected. Uh, I don't hold grudges, but I have my own way of thinking. So I like people to respect my thoughts and I like to respect theirs. I want to give back to young adults what people gave me. And I'm involved with the um, NAACP here in Edwardsville. Yeah, I'm involved with that. Yep. How is the supposed retired life treating you? Because you're clearly not retired. No, I'm not retired. So many plans on a Saturday. I love being retired. I've been retired 10 years. I'm, sometime I sub as an administrator. Yeah. I do that too. So I go to church. I like to sing in the choir at church. Uh, I'm on the missionary society at my church. I love that. I'm. Uh, second vice president of NAACP, and I've been involved with NAACP probably since I've been here. I'm a past president member of National Council of Negro Women. I belong to a professional women's organization called Delta Kappa Gamma. It's not a sorority, it's a professional women's organization. Uh, I Faith in action, I do that. I go to Emmanuel and help with them when they're serving as much as possible. So I keep myself busy. I think of myself as a servant. I want to help somebody. That's my calling. And it makes me feel good. It gives you joy to know that you've helped somebody else. Do you feel like your life's purpose has been completed? Um, your purpose with education, obviously. Uh, no, I still have work to do. That's why <laughs> I thank the Lord every day for giving me health and strength that I could keep doing something to make a difference in your lives. That's what I want to do. And I don't want to stop till I take my last breath. I want to be able to help someone.